Howdy folks, this is Jared with Fluey Lake Homestead and today we're going to be putting a cane bottom in this rocking chair and, inst and instead of my last video we used a store bought cane we're going to be using a natural hickory bark on this one and uh, this I just harvested and uh, you see I've got a video on how I built this and uh, I've had this soaking in some warm water here for just a little bit and it's starting to get flexible again now I've had it hanging in the barn loft to dry and uh, this is one piece and I'm going to just uh, let that soak a minute more and then I'm going to get up close here and show you how I start and how we're going to weave this chair bottom. Okay what I've done for this first piece is I've shaved the end down a little thinner than that's about the thickness I use. Uh, I don't know how thick that is. But I shave this end down just a little more and I'm going to go over the top first and I wrap it around it again and then I hold that in there and I pull this tight over it and then I come up front and I start around the front here. And I leave a little gap here because these chairs are wider. These rocking chairs and a sitting chair is wider in the front and the back. And you want this to go straight. So now, once this gets some tension on it, this will tighten up this back piece. And sometimes I'll have to do that a time or two to get it just the way I want it. But uh, get my marker entangled here. For these first runs especially, the longer the pieces, the better, because that's less splices we're going to have. It's a little harder to work with. Some of these pieces I've got about 30 foot long. But it'll be well worth it in the end. Let's see, I'm going to tighten this up before I go any further. Because I want this to get a good hold on it. And this ain't gonna be, I mean, crazy tight right now because it'll get tighter as we weave. And here we're gonna come back. Now, this back part, I get it a little closer than I do in the front because uh, I ha about have to to make it all fit right. But up front here, I'll leave about a quarter inch gap. Because uh, if you get it too close, you won't be able to get your cane. You won't be able to weave it through. When this dries, it'll be tighter than a banjo string. get fairly tight but you ain't gotta have it tight enough to play a tune on it and I'm gonna put it like I said a little closer in the back than I am the front almost together in the back you probably could put it together all right and now this is a mo one of the most important steps I always end my run on the bottom you want all your splices on the bottom because you don't want to see a big ugly splice on the top so uh, now I want to uh, get me another piece of cane then I'll show you how we're going to splice this cane okay I got me another piece here and I'm going to go ahead and run it the way it'll be going and be coming this way I'm going to cut this end off of it and now the first piece I'm gonna leave me about, I don't know, about an inch right here, I guess. I'm gonna cut this like an arrowhead shape. And I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna cut in to about the midway. I'm gonna cut a notch out right here. 
Let me get it up here a little closer to the camera. Same on this side. I'm gonna come in. All right, there's our first piece. See how it's got a, a notch here? Okay, now we're gonna get this other piece we just left behind. And I'm gonna come up here and leave about the same amount, about an inch, inch and a half or so. And I'm gonna cut me a hole in this one. You don't wanna cut your finger off. It'll be a lot harder to weave a chair if you're missing a finger. Now, there's that. Now, make sure you can still see this good here. You can see that hole right there. Alrighty, and make sure your uh, your pretty side is down because you you want it to be on top whenever you come back on top. And uh, the side that goes in is the side, this side is against the tree, and this is the side that we've shaved, and it'll turn real pretty and brown when it ages a little. Now what we're going to do is just put this right through there and uh, you're spliced. And uh, see how pretty that is? That's all you'll see on the bottom. And that'll hold till the till the Lord comes. It's, uh, it's strong, strong. When this dries, it wouldn't surprise me if you could pull a truck with that notch up there. Believe me, I've I've made a little piece and uh, pulled on it two people, and uh, they didn't, they couldn't break it loose. So it'll hold somebody's butt sitting on it. This hickory bark ain't perfect, but it ain't. It's hard to do perfect for it. Yeah, the more laps you can get around this, the better. That's that many less splices, and that's that'll make it good and strong. And I see this piece I'm going to, have to cut off because there ain't enough to come back around to the bottom again. So that piece wasn't near as long as the other one. I may have to soak me a few, get me a few more soaking. But I'll cut this one off, and uh, we'll splice in the same way. Okay, I've got the that one cut and ready to notch. And now I have seen a notch where they uh, shave it down real thin at the end, and then they tie it. And uh, that works. I've got a couple chairs that's done like that. But uh, this is I like this way. This I think will hold better, and this, I think it'd be easier to do than sitting there trying to tie all that. So we're almost halfway of this chair. And uh, I've got me a big long piece soaking it over to finish it after this little piece. And uh, the color of this will totally change once it dries. It's still fairly green looking after you soak it. And But you see it was pretty brown before I put it in the water. It'll dry a nice golden brown color. This is only, I ain't had this strip in about a week. It's still pretty fresh. Okay, I'm gonna splice me another one. And uh, I'll go ahead and lace this uh, all the way over, and then I'll show you how I start back across. Okay, we've come to the end of the first uh, round now. And uh, most time I like them to, when they end in the back corner where I can start, but it ended in the front, and uh, we're just gonna have to go with it. So now, 
I've, this is still I've got about six seven feet left on this piece right here so that's perfect you want to be able to have enough to make you a good round or two uh, with your first weave that way it makes it good and strong so to start our top all we're going to do is come around the bottom here and curl him under and uh, we're going to get a hold of him and bring him around the side here now and then this is where we will start our weave at and um, it don't much matter if you start in the front or the back I don't think uh, there might be if any of you all are more professional chair weavers than I am you can comment on here and tell me if I'm wrong but I've done them both ways and they're all still working so we're going to just push this through where I can get to the end of it and then uh, you gotta be able to it's good if you have a little clamp too you can hold this while you're working but well, let me get to the end and uh, the weave we're going to do is what I, it's called a splint weave and you can go uh it's alternate that way it looks more like a herringbone pattern or such and uh the way i do i'll go we're going to start we're going to skip the we're going to go over this first one then we're going to go under two and over two under two and over two and you can do three too if you want to you can do over three under three but uh i've been liking doing two and you just do this all the way across and you see it worked out perfect where i skipped this one that i went over the first one on each side it's starting to rain here on me blow blow in a little but that's okay chair's wet anyway then we're going to pull this all the way across and i'll cut that little splinter off there in a minute but now we're going to pull keep this pulled pretty good and tight hold him right here now we've got to pull this up here nice and straight with each other and this is where it's going to start tying together i can feel already that uh getting tighter so there's our first round and now what we've got to do is flip this chair over and we've got to weave the bottom the same as the top so i'm gonna go ahead and flip the chair over and take it back across okay here we are in the bottom now and uh now we're going to do the same thing i'm going to go it don't, the bottom don't matter as much i mean you want it to look good too but you can go over one under one if you want to but i just weave the bottom the same as i do the top and uh we're going to go over two under two and over two all the way across here and then uh we'll flip him back over and then i'll show you you'll really be able to see what i'm talking about where it alternates there's that splinter again i forgot to cut And then we're going to pull him good and tight and straighten him up here. Now we're going to flip him back. That's the bad thing about doing these big rocking chairs. So they're heavy to flip uh, over. A little cane a ladder back chair, uh, you can flip it over real easy. So we're going to flip him over and start again. Okay, we're back on the top. Still the same piece of cane. And now, here's the most important thing. All right right here we went over one so now we have to go over two and then once you do that you still do the same pattern over two under two over two under two over two and uh this is starting out especially you got to pay close attention because you don't want to get halfway across your chair and look back and see where you've got two in the same gap here where you've missed one because it will bug you from here on out i promise i've done it and i've unlaced them before and fixed it the bottom it don't much matter i wouldn't cry too much about the bottom but the top you want it to look good that's what you're going to be looking at every day 
and then I pull them over here tight as I can. Okay, and uh, as far as I can see, every one of these looks good. Now we're going to flip him over, and got to do it again. And then uh, I'll uh, skip until I get back here to the top, and then show you next. Okay, here we go back on top again. It looks like I got enough cane to go around maybe one more time. So now we have went over two and that's all we're going over now. So we're going to start back now and go under one. And then we'll go over two. And if you see that lace is over every other one every time and it'll go in a spiral like a chevron or a... Uh, um, a herringbone pattern all the way across the chair mm, it's getting tight now Now, we got to keep pulling this over. We want them as close as we can get them. And you can even take a little uh, piece of metal or wood and kind of push on these if you need to, to help you get them over. Uh, anything to help pull them over tight. Most time you can get them by hand, but if you got more frail hands or something, well, you might need a little help. All right, I'm gonna flip him over, weave him across the bottom, and then uh, we should be ready to splice our next piece. And I'm gonna show you how I splice the cross pieces here. I don't do the uh, same way as I normally would. Okay, we're up on the bottom side now, and as you can see. Well, you might not be able to see. I run out of cane here before I go back to the top. So, you can do this two ways. You can either splice it the same way we did and uh, then pull it tight. Or, um, some a lot of times, I will take another piece of cane, make sure it ain't real thick, and I'll cut this one off. Say, I'd probably cut this one right here. And then I'll overlap uh, my next piece of cane right over it and tuck it in under this joint. But, uh... It'll hold. It'll pull itself tight and hold right on. But uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and splice it and just uh, make sure I have my splice back back in here somewhere. So we're going to splice our next piece and then uh, keep on a weaving. Okay, here's how I've spliced this piece. I cut the, the first one off. It's right there. And I shaved this one down a little thinner and I run it right over top of it. And I brought it under this and I've uh, curled it over this piece and tucked it back under this and then uh, I've done several like this and I've never had one come out yet but uh, if you've done this more than me and frown upon that well let me know but that'll work and uh, these pieces here once they're wove in uh, when they dry it'll be so hard you can't hardly pull them out so we're gonna flip them over and keep on a weaving okay we're in the back of the chair here now and it's really hard to get this through it's so tight now so uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got this butter knife that you can use a chisel or about anything and uh, now I'm just gonna stick this butter knife down here in this crack and slide my cane in and let it slide right up that butter knife slick as butter it's pouring the rain here I hope y'all can hear me Kinda nice though. So. We'll do the same thing. These last two rounds, or three, is probably the hardest of the whole chair because it gets really tight. That's why you gotta leave them first ones just a little space in them. Or you can't hardly work with them. 
reason I could have probably left just a hair more than this. But it's going. You gotta be careful if you use a sharp knife, you end up cutting your cane. I need to be back to square one. So now I pull this tight and uh, I have to get move over here and pull it. And I think we'll get maybe one more round, maybe two. And then this bottom will be done, then we gotta do the back of it. Um, a lot of these chairs I do, I don't have to do the back, but this one you do, so we don't care. We'll weave her up. Okay, here's the finished chair bottom. And as you see, we got the back done as well. And we done it the same as the bottom. And um, you also can see that the color has changed a lot. And it's now a real pretty brown color. And it'll only get better with age. And uh, this chair is good to go for future generations. And should last many years to come. And I appreciate y'all watching. Hope you learned something. And make sure you like and subscribe. Hope you have a very blessed day.